um, the derivative of both x and y, right? So we said, well, how come the derivative of y has this dy thing? And that's when we talked about the chain rule. And when you're taking the derivative of x, you're really, you know, when you're taking the derivative of 2x, you're really taking the derivative of x also, right? But that's yeah. 1. So that was sort of a new concept for you guys. And then in the last section, we were doing those science problems. And instead of just having y's and x's, it was something like, uh, I don't know, area equals pi r squared. And so when we took the derivative of this, it was d what, d what? DA dr. And so we were saying, how does the radius or the area of the circle change with respect to the radius, right? And that gave us 2 pi r. What we're going to do now is we're going to say, let's take area equals pi r squared. And let's find the rate of change of the area with respect to time. So we're taking the derivative of this function with respect to a third variable. Okay? Right, there's no time in there. And so the way that you would do that is you would say, this is going to be dA dt plus, I mean equals, the derivative of pi r squared is still 2 pi r, but by the chain rule, I need to multiply that by the derivative r of r, which is, since I'm taking the derivative with respect to time, it will be dr dt. Okay? So mm you -hmm. just add the time in there? What's that? You just like to put the time Yep, so you can just put the time in here, okay? And we can do that with whatever we want. Okay, so I could take, yes, I could take the derivative of the, uh, I could take the area and figure the rate of change with respect to uh, variance. So I could go the A, the M equals 2 pi R, and then that would have to be the R, the M. Okay, that means that now we are not looking at how does this quantity change when that quantity changes. But is it we're looking at how does that quantity change over time. Well, what does it okay. mean if you use variance? Like, why do you that would make any sense. Yeah, that would I know. Make <laughs> sense. So, um, are we ever going to figure out like DRDT? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. okay, so for example, for example, Let's say air is being pumped into a spherical balloon so that its volume increases at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. What you have to recognize to start with is what they just told us is that dv dt equals 100. Okay? Nice. You're way out ahead of the path. Right here. Right in order. No, you nailed it. Okay? So when it says the volume is increasing at this rate, or the volume is decreasing at this rate, or the length is increasing or decreasing at this rate, uh, that means the whatever d time, okay, the rate of change with respect to time is equal to that number. Okay? Does that first part make sense? No. Good. Okay. How fast is the radius of the balloon increasing? So what are we asked to try to find? How fast is the radius of the balloon increasing? We're trying to find the R or the T. Okay. Uh, it's not really anything. It's just the change, rate of change of the radius with respect to time. How fast is the radius of the balloon increasing? Okay. When the diameter, so frozen in time, at the picture in time, at that instant, instantaneously, when the diameter, uh, and I'm going to write out diameter so you don't get confused and think that that's a D something, when the diameter equals 50 centimeters. Okay? So that's the information that we know, and then that's what we're trying to find. And here's how you solve these problems. You have to come up with a formula on your own. Okay. <laughs> what is the formula that you would come up with in this case on your own? 100 minus 50 plus 50. No, 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 no. Totally unrelated to the numbers that they have given you. Yes. Okay. What is a formula that you know for some of the information in this problem? Uh, volume. volume. 
of a sphere, because it says a spherical balloon, <coughs> the volume of a sphere is what? No, it's four thirds. Four thirds, four thirds pi r cubed. Are we supposed to just know these? Uh, no, I think they're in the back of your book. Yeah, they usually give you the yeah, they'll so give you the right one. Okay, so hold on, before we move on, Taylor's ready to just go charging down the middle and solve the problem. Do you understand why this is the formula that we need? Because it's saying something about the volume of a spherical balloon. So you go, oh, I must need to know the volume of a sphere. Okay? Okay, so once you come up with this formula, Right, I need to take the derivative, but not the VDR, because I'm now worried about the rate of change with respect to time. Okay, so here we go. You ready? Hey, bad time to not be paying attention. The derivative of this with respect to time is the VDT equals, the variable here is the R, so I put the 3 in front. What's 4 thirds times 3? 4 I, I subtract 1 from the... Uh, exponent, right? And then I use the chain rule, and the derivative of this variable is dr dt, okay? And this bad boy right here is what we're trying to figure out, okay? We know what this is, uh huh, and we know what this is because they told us that the diameter is 50, so we can plug those things in and then solve for this. Okay, so I want to stop though and just sort of recap what just happened. Okay, because this is going to be the same process again and again and again and again. So they're going to give us some information. Okay, we're going to come up with a equa an equation on our own based on geometry, the Pythagorean theorem, um, I don't know, distance equals rate times time, you know, all those fun things that you learned when you were little. Okay, we're going to take the derivative of that equation and then plug in the stuff that we know to solve for the thing that we want. Okay? Does that process make sense? And I think that there is a, here's your problem solving strategy. And this is uh, in the book somewhere. Okay? Read the problem carefully. Draw a diagram. That's all done. Um, so we get Right here is when the important stuff starts, okay? Express the given information and the required rate in terms of derivatives. So that's what I did when I wrote down um, the VDT equals 100, and we're trying to find the RDT. So that's the given information and the stuff we're trying to find in terms of derivatives. So we're basically starting at uh, step four here, okay? Write an equation that relates the various quantities of the problem. So that's something that you're going to have to come up with. Okay? This is when things get really fun. If necessary, use the geometry of the situation to eliminate one of the variables by substitution. Okay? So at some point, we're going to come up with an equation that doesn't. Th this volume equation for a sphere is really nice because it's only based on the radius. But there are other equations like the Pythagorean theorem that have two variables in them, right? So you're going to have to figure out the relationship between those two variables uh, and before you do the math there, okay? Use the chain rule to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t, and then substitute the given information into the resulting equation and solve for the unknown rate. So, all right? So those last four steps there, that's the stuff that we're going to be going through together. Right, so we're on number, we did number six. I want to see that. So we started with this, and then so I just did dr because the chain rule, and then you just yeah. over dt, and then that's right. that's the right. and just randomly do that. Yeah. Okay. You don't randomly do it. Okay. Okay. All right, so now we plug in the stuff that we know and we solve. So what's the VDT? 100. That equals 4 pi times the radius squared. What's the radius? 25 <coughs> times dr dt. Okay? Hello. Hi. Okay. Did you call me before? I did. I'm with Andrea. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, okay, so uh, 100 equals 
4 pi times 25 squared is uh, 625 times dr dt. You guys know your fives, how to square your fives? Um, okay, so then, uh, I don't know, you figure this out. Uh, and you can leave that in terms of pi, or you can um, put it out as a decimal or That's the RGT, right? Oh, so yeah, the book did it what? No, I looked at it on top. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I would uh, first go 100 divided by 4 is 25. Okay? So that would be uh, 25 equals 625 pi over the RGT. Right? And then I would divide both sides by 625. And I'm going to try and keep it as an exact answer. So uh, 25 goes into 625, 25 times. So I write this as 1 over 25 pi, or 0 0.0, whatever you said. Um, and our units are centimeters is the dr, or dt is seconds. Okay. No, because we're only talking about the radius, but the change of the volume is cubed, but the radius is a, is a linear. Okay? All right? Easiest stuff ever. Yeah, that's it. So when the, uh, in the, in this situation, when the diameter is 50 centimeters, the radius is increasing at a rate of 1 over 25 pi centimeters. Okay? That's it. Oh, look at that. All right. Um, so let's play again. This is actually one of my favorite little math problems. Uh, it says a ladder 10 feet long rests against a vertical wall. If the bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall at a rate of one foot per second, so the bottom is sliding away from the wall one foot per second, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall? Okay? And the reason why I like this problem is because your instinct is left. They're the same. Yeah. If the bottom's sliding away at one foot per uh, second, then the top has to be going at the same rate because they're connected. Okay. Um, yeah. That is uh, turns out to be incorrect. Okay. So if we take our little problem-solving strategy here, it says, ex sorry, express the given information in the required rate in terms of derivatives. Okay. So they gave us one right here. Dx dt is equal to 1, okay? So that's the given information. And again, your key word here is rate. Anytime it uses the word rate. We're trying to find dy dt. And we are trying to find dy dt. Okay? So we have expressed the given information and the required information in terms of derivatives. What's our uh, next wait. step in the problem solving process? Okay, I didn't have a question. Good, I'm glad. Um, so write out the formula. Yeah, what does it say? Uh, write an equation that relates the various quantities of the problem. So here are the various quantities of the problem. So we're all the theory. Right, so we're going to go Pythagorean yeah. theorem. So in this situation here that we're dealing with, x squared plus y squared equals 100. Okay? What? Uh, no, actually we're in luck here because the ladder is a fixed this distance, so this only has two variables also. And we have two variables here too, so we're going to be fine. Okay? So that was the uh, next step. Okay? Uh, so we don't have to do this part if necessary. Use the geometry of the situation. Okay, so use the chain rule to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t. So the derivative of x squared is 2x times dx dt. Plus the derivative of y squared is 2y dy dt. And the derivative of 100 is 0. 
<coughs> there's two uh, functions in math who the derivative is itself zero is one of them. We don't know it yet. Uh, okay, then the last step, substitute the given information into the resulting equation and solve for the unknown rate. Okay, so I'm going to take this stuff right here and plug in all of the stuff that I know and I'm going to end up solving for dy dt. Okay, so 2 times, what's x? What is it? Keep shouting out numbers six. randomly and I guarantee you eventually six. you'll get it. 6. Why? Why? Because it says the bottom of the ladder is 6 feet from the wall. Oh, good job. Okay. Got it. The right bottom there. of the ladder is six feet from the wall, so x is six times the x dt is the rate that it's uh, sliding along the ground, so that's one plus two times y. Now we have a problem. Uh, so right here. I'm just taking this equation. Hold on. I'm just taking this equation right here. I'm just plugging in this stuff. Okay. Awesome. Taylor, you're on a roll today. Okay, so we know what x is at that instant, it's 6. We know that this is 10, always, and so we can use the Pythagorean theorem, or we can just say it's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, so we know that y is uh, 8 times dy dt, uh, and that all equals 0. Okay? So, survey says dy dt equals negative 12 over 16, which is negative 3 points. And that would be feet per second. Um, okay, I'm just going to question. Yeah. Uh, so there's like reference points on this, so like the negative means in the state. Exactly, yeah, great question, great comment. The reason why, hold on a second, the reason why this answer is negative is because the top of the ladder is going in. But I still don't understand. Well, so you've got all the calculus part, but you can't do 12 times 6 times 1 is 12. Okay, yeah. Okay, <laughs> subtract, I understand that. subtract 12 and divide by 16. Why? Oh, that's what? <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, I'm like, nice job, Taylor. Well, I didn't understand what they said. Yeah. 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 See, I was like, no, DYDT is like totally. Okay, but you got it? You got it? Okay. Uh, easy stuff, right? Yeah. Whoever said AP calculus was hard to pass? They were, they were wrong. All right, so now we get into a little bit of fun. No, I don't like this one. Why? Wait, why? Wait, why? Wait, why? Okay, so this one says a water tank has the shape of an inverted circular cone with base radius 2 uh, and height of 4. If water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of 2 rate. meters cubed per minute, okay, rate. So what is that? What did we just figure out? Of what? What's G over D? Right, good. DB DT. Yes. Okay. And uh, since water is being pumped into the tank, Leanne said there is a reference here, so this is going to be a positive 2. If water was draining from the tank, it would be important for us to write that rate as a negative 2. Okay? If water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of 2 cubic meters per minute, find the rate at which the water level is rising. So we're looking for a positive answer when the water is 3 meters deep. So the water level is rising is what? We need another derivative here. The rate at which the water level is rising would be dHdt. So we are trying to find dHdt. Okay? All right? What? Calculus in the morning, yeah. Pretty exciting stuff. Okay, so that was number four, express the given information of the required rate in terms of derivatives, okay? Now we're in trouble. 
Write an equation that relates the various quantities of the problem. If necessary, use the geometry of the situation to eliminate one of the variables by substitution, as in example three, and we are in example three, okay? So, uh, what is the formula that we one know here? Right. right, one, right, the volume of a cone is equal to one-third pi r squared h, okay? So now we've got a bad deal here because we have the volume, which is changing. We have the radius of the water, which is changing as the water or the tank fills up with water. We have the height, which is changing also. And we don't want three variables, okay? So we need to find a relationship between the radius and the height. And they made this nice little picture for us. So you should, no, 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 no BRs or anything. Just from geometry. Okay, so if you look at this stuff right here, can anybody tell me a relationship between R and H and two and four? Oh, R is half of H. R is always half of H. Okay, these are similar triangles right here. So H is two R. Okay, right. Um, and so no matter how deep the water is, the radius is always going to be half of the height of the water. So it's one third. Okay, I just, before we go on, I appreciate you guys all trying to charge forward, but do you guys understand that, where she got that? From this relationship right here? Okay, so R is equal to uh, one half of H, uh, which means that H is equal to two R, which means that we can rewrite this as two thirds pi R cubed. Just look at it, think about it. No, but we don't want to use R, we want to use... Oh, yeah, you're right, because we're trying to find the HTT. Good call, I screwed up. Okay, so she's right. We want an H in our problem because that's what we're trying to find. So we need to use this substitution, not the uh, other one. Okay, nicely done. Um, so one-third pi times the radius squared, which is, we now know one-half the height, uh, is H. There we go. Okay. Much grosser, yes, and grosser is a word. Um, is it? Yes, the person that you buy oh. groceries from. Isn't that a grosser? It's not too bad, it's much grosser. 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 It's much grosser. Much grosser. It's much more grosser than people. It's okay, Elena's is trying to teach me Russian and I can't even say it. It's like it's a okay. five it's syllable word. Not. It's okay because she has the highest Spanish grade and she cheats out all of her tests. Yeah, but I'm I have to be formal with her because I'm her teacher. I, I can't say that I gotta say Alright, so this simplifies to uh what? What does this all simplify to? No, no, one, no. One, one twelfth. One half squared is one fourth. One fourth times one third is one twelfth. So this is one twelfth pi h cubed. Okay? And so we just had to make that one little extra step in there. Uh, and that wasn't too bad thanks to uh, the world. Well, you just would have done nothing to plug in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that has to be over okay, right. So it's always going to be over time because it's the it's a it's a rate of change with respect to time, right? So dv dt equals one fourth. Good, because if you put the three in front, three over twelve reduces to one fourth. I'm taking the derivative of the uh, right hand side. Okay, uh, one fourth pi h squared times. Okay. Okay. So while I unconfuse Taylor, will the rest of you plug in what you know for dvdt for h and use that to solve for dhdt? What are you confused about? Oh, just kidding. I understand we just say what dvdt is, but that's what we're doing. Yeah. Right. What is it? Is it three or four? It's what three. 
Please it says when the water is three meters deep, so you use oh. three. Okay? Okay? So we're going to plug in uh, two for dvdt. We're going to plug in uh, three for h. And then solve that for uh, dhdt. So nine fourths multiplied by the reciprocal of eight ninths. And that would be uh, no, because we're only talking about the height. So we're going to change the height, and that's a linear thing. So it's just going to be meters per second. Okay. All right. Okay, so we did that already. Uh, oh, warning. Good warning. <laughs> Don't do any of this ever in your life. <laughs> that's really easy to read, isn't it? Isn't it? The common error is to substitute the given information uh, for quantities that vary with time too early. So in other words, sometimes kids take this formula that we came up with right here, and then they go, oh, well, the height is 3, so I'm going to plug in 3. And then solve that for the volume, and that's my answer, or something like that. Yeah, that's not what you want to do because then you you want to plug this in always uh, as your last step. Okay, this should be done only after the differentiation. For example, in uh, for instance, in example three, uh, right? If, yeah. Okay, so don't do that. Um, okay. Car A is traveling west at 50 miles per hour. Okay. You know, it's a race. now forever, when you're driving your car, and you look and see how fast you're going. You're looking at it through. Right? No. It's, it's a rate of change. That's what I felt. Right? Right? So car A is traveling west, so that's going to the left. So that's going to be the x dt is what? Negative 50. Okay? Car B is traveling north at 60 miles an hour. So uh, north south is y. So that is the y dt equals 60. Uh, both are headed for the intersection of two roads. At what rate are the cars approaching each other when uh, car A is 0.3 miles and car B is 0.3? Four miles from the intersection. So, what are we trying to find? Their intersection. Uh, the. Uh, oh, no, not a variable. Is it their the rate of change with respect to the other car? I feel like it's just dz dt that they're. That's not what is the change? Yeah. So that's the distance apart that they are. And so, the rate of change of that distance would be how fast they're getting closer to each other, right? So all we need to find here is what uh, dv is. <coughs> okay. What's that? They are approaching the intersection. So we should get a, uh, that's a dz, a really bad dz. So we should get a negative answer, right? Because that distance is getting smaller. I don't know, because it's a rate, so I'm not sure. But I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay, so what's the uh, formula that we need? D equals Pythagorean theorem. Uh, Pythagorean theorem. Okay. This is a triangle. Yeah. So x squared plus y squared equals z e squared. Uh, no, we're going to be fine. Well, can't we put Because they gave us two of the derivatives, so it's going to be okay. Oh, but that's yeah. what we need to find. Okay? So the derivative of x squared is 2x times the x dt. We're not plugging anything in yet. We just talked about that. That's Warning! True. Don't do that yet. But it's uh, the okay. The derivative of y squared is 2y dy dt. And the derivative of z squared is 2z dz dt. Okay? What's that? Can we substitute some stuff? You don't like the two? You want to get rid of the two? Can we get rid of the two? I guess we can do that. Just get rid of the two? Okay. 
Uh, good question. What does Z equal? But we don't know what Z equals. We, we can yeah, figure out. Point it's point five. Point five. Okay. Right. We can figure out Z because we know that X is point three and B is point four. So that means that Z is going to be point five. That's the distance that they so are apart. Yeah, so we know what x is, we know what the x and t is, we know what y is, and we know what the y dt is, we just figured out what z is, so we can use that all to figure out what z is. So, this is an imaginary triangle? Yes, yes. This is an imaginary triangle. Uh, well, the two came from the power rule, because you put the, yeah. Uh, but then Gabby noticed that since we had a two in every term, we could just divide everything by two. Okay. So the um, 0.3 miles and the 0.4 miles, <coughs> is that the important? That's important. Well, that's totally important. That's that's important. Like you're, like you're We're doing that right now. That's the last step, is always to take those static measurements and plug it in, yeah, after you take those. Okay. Plus that uh, allowed us to figure out what Z is. Miles per hour is what we got going here. So negative 15 plus 24 equals 0.5. Uh, so 9. So it does come out to be positive. Because they're going towards each other. Okay. one. A man walks along a straight path at a speed of four feet per second, so they have just told us, right. according to the drawing, uh, the rate dx dt equals four. Searchlight is located on the ground 20 feet from the path and is kept focused on the man. He could be an actor, he could be a person with speed. At what rate is the searchlight rotating? <laughs> At what rate is the searchlight rotating? So that's going to be nice, the theta dt. Okay. And at what rate is the searchlight rotating when the man is 15 feet from the point on the path closest to the searchlight? Okay. So give us a, a formula that relates the information here in this triangle for theta to 20 in the end. Uh, sign. Sign? No, we don't. We no, just kidding. Uh, I can't use it. Uh, you could use a tiger theme, but we're it's trying to find here. out. It's arctan. Well, we're going to use it as an arctan here. Maybe. Because it's one we can help. Okay. So the tangent of theta, here's the equation that we know that relates the information to the problem. The tangent of theta is equal to x over okay, 20. Now, I can use that 20 in the problem because that's never going to change. Does that make sense? The searchlight is 20 feet from the wall and it's staying right there. I can't use this 15 because that's where he is right at that instant when he's walking, so that's where Right. So, take the derivative. Yeah. The derivative of tangent is. Secant x squared. No, secant x squared. No, yeah. What's that? What's the point? This point right here. How come I want to get How come? That's a good question. Oh, because it says from the point on the path that is closest to the search oh, okay? Uh, the derivative of tangent here. is? Secant squared. Secant squared. Uh, so that. this is going to be secant squared theta times, okay, times, chain rule, uh, d theta dt, yeah. which is awesome because that's what we're trying to find. 
equals what's the derivative of x over 20? Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Right now. What? 1 over 20 times chain rule is x d t. Okay? Yeah, so now I just plug crap into that. I mean, stuff into that. Um, we're missing one piece. We don't know what thing it is. Okay? But it says when the man is 15 feet from the point on the path. So this is 15. So we okay. Yeah, now we want to be in radians. Okay? So do the arctan of uh, 0.75 in radians. Um, we're probably supposed to be using. Yeah, yeah, we should to get exact answers of the five. That's not what happens. What does it have as much for theta? Oh, it has four over five. It has what? Four over five. Four over five. I might use the same. Secant is the inverse of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is another three, four, five right triangle. So the cosine of theta here would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 20 over 25 or 4 fifths. Which means the secant of theta would be 5 fourths. Okay, so we don't actually need to know what the angle is. We need to square that. Right, square it, so that would be uh, 25 over 16 times t theta t t t, which is what we're trying to find, equals 1 over 20 times the x t t, which is 4. So, yeah, 25 over 16 times t theta t t. Equals one fifth, so you multiply by the reciprocal, and you get uh, 16 over 125. Yeah. 16 over 125, and that would be what are my units? I'm going to go radians per second. Okay. Raise how it says is our answer. 16 over one. Okay. All right. What? Um, try and get a start on this, and then I'll give you the uh, class period on Monday to work on it together. Also. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll do.